What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the new video. In today's video, we're going to be going over the swing failure pattern, also known as SFP. From what I've seen, this pattern was originally coined by Tom Dante, also known as Trader Dante, around 2012. Before we get into what an SFP is, let's look and identify swing lows and swing highs. Now, there are many ways to identify and categorize different versions of swing highs and lows. I personally use a three candle formation of a high followed by a candle with a lower high and a lower high so that would be a swing high three candles formation that's all you need is just those three a swing low would be a low followed with a higher low on the right higher low on the left just those three candles even in this little price like here on the hourly chart there are swing highs and swing lows everywhere this would be a swing low this would be a swing low swing low swing high swing low swing low swing low Clearly, you can see there are a lot. How can we determine which swing points are going to be more significant and which ones we can kind of ignore if we get an SS SFP at that level? Everyone kind of has their own way of doing this. A simple version I can show you here is looking for swing highs and lows that coincide with the daily chart. For example, right here, this swing low on Tuesday, December 20th. So this daily swing low right here from the 20th would be more significant than some internal range swing low here. And why is that? When we look at SFPs, they're essentially a sweep of liquidity. Our common liquidity rules apply here, as on the daily chart or on any higher time frame chart, there are going to be more eyes on the swing points. So obviously, there are going to be more orders resting there. So on a daily swing low like this, when we come and revisit on the 22nd, we are going to have longs being stopped out below this daily swing low. And more importantly, we're going to have new short sellers who enter positions on a stop order or just getting short around here. They are going to be stopped out and they're going to be forced to buy the market back up as well, creating this move. If we're looking at this range here and we have this high up here and this low down here, and we're defining that as a range, obviously there will be more liquidity below this low than there will be below this low, below this wall, because there are just more eyes and that is a full range breakout. Okay, so now let's get into it. What is an SFP? So an SFP is a candle that sweeps a previous swing point, as we've just identified, and closes back above it. So on the four hour here, this was our daily swing low, also a four hour swing low. And as you can see, we come visit it on the 22nd here. Our price drives below, but then we quickly sweep back up, closing above this swing low. So that would be a bullish SFP, sweeping the liquidity below and closing above. Now let's look at a bearish SFP. Here we sweep above the swing high. We are stopping out shorts. We are also initiating breakout long players who take a long above this high at the breakout here, thinking we're heading higher which will quickly be found in a losing position, maybe a bit of a winner here in this example, but then most likely be stopped out as we travel below, which gives us more momentum in our selling. There was also another SFP here with this one hour candle. And as you can see, maybe multiple SFPs, that's something you can combine. Obviously, this is just a basis. Trading is special because we get to add on our own confluences and our own kind of bias in a way. So hey, maybe multiple SFPs at a level, hmm, Price may be bearish, and may be headed down soon. So the type of candle for your SFP does not matter. It's still an SFP no matter how the candle closes, as long as it closes above the swing low or below the respective swing high that it's sweeping. However, the type of candle may affect your probabilities on your short trade here. Look at this bearish SFP. So if you're right here following this candle closes, it is an SFP of the swing level here but does that candle look particularly bearish to you? With our FIB, we're still closing our body above the 50% level. Our close is relatively close to the swing high we swept. So I wouldn't say this candle is particularly bearish in my opinion, and that may lower the probabilities of entering a short here just because we still close fairly bullish. But a better example here is this swing high that gets swept and SFP'd of course, not really a major swing high, so that could lower your probabilities as well. As you can see here, this candlestick forms a shooting star pattern in an uptrend. This is known as a bearish pattern. You can see we come sweep that high, then we close below our 50% mark. Majority of the candle is a wick here and we trade down bearish forming a bearish golfing right away there. 
Obviously, we didn't get a huge move here, but I just wanted to demonstrate that principle for a bullish example on the four hour here on the euro dollar. We have this swing low does just get barely swept, but that still is an SFP because it does sweep the level, forming a strong bullish hammer. And then boom, we quickly trade right back up. So really important to explore different confirmations. Maybe you get a high time frame SFP on the 12 hour daily. Then you go look on the lower time frame for a confirmation, a break of structure. Maybe you use RSI over bought over sold. Maybe you use some sort of MACD divergence or just a combination with another type of pattern. There are so many ways to create a system out of this simple pattern. Of course, it can be used on the lower time frames as well. One thing I want to note here is an SFP on a higher time frame is simply a deviation of a range or a high and a low on a lower time frame. Let me show you what I mean. So we have this weekly swing high here that we come we SFP it on this week as well as this week in August. Now on the daily chart, this swing high is only an SFP on this daily candle, but instead it's just a deviation on these other two. And moving down even lower on the time frames here, we can see we break out, retest, retest again and then fail to break out, deviate this high level, break down below, even get an hourly retest on this candle here before trading back down below. Okay, so how we enter SFPs is another thing that you need to explore. And just like finding combinations of confluence and your patterns, there are many different ways to enter an SFP. You can enter at the close here. So on this five minute candle, say we were to enter here with our stop, do you put it just above the high? I've also seen people put their stops using an ATR based stop. You just add the ATR of your time frame up above and use that as your stop instead. Many different ways to do it. Obviously, you have to explore for yourself. Okay, so hopefully that all makes sense to you guys. So yeah, the SFP, just a sweep of a swing low or high with a close back above or below. Boom, SFP it, sweep the liquidity, close below, trade down. Bearish engulfing candle gives you more confluence for a short setup there. SFPs can give you bias, SFPs can give you entries, SFPs can just be a part of your checklist, which then you look for other things to find a high probability trade. Really just have to explore and figure it out for yourself. So if you're looking for more education on SFPs, Trader Dante has some great education and webinar. I'm not affiliated with him at all, but there are some paid webinars. It's about 20 bucks. I watched one yesterday. It's just over an hour long on the SFP. There is a lot of good info in there. All right, that is going to be it for the video. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you've got any questions about the SFP, leave them down below. I'll try my best to answer those. Also, if you have suggestions for new videos, please leave those in the comments as well.